lower back, you can kind of see the paint starting to set up and dry. Remember, we put the salmon on and we let that dry overnight so that it will be nice and hard because if you try to do this all in one day with the salmon and then the green on top, what's going to happen is, is all the colors will mix together. So what we have is we have a bucket of water. And I have a damp rag here, you know, that's just damp. I mean, there's really not any moisture left in here anymore. I mean, so you can't even really wring any water out of it. So it's just damp. So now what we're going to do is, this, this door is a very bottom door. There's already some natural wear that's occurring on this door, you know, down here. You know, you can see that, those spots, and that's where this is close to the ground, you know, of our, of our cabinet, and where it would have uh, actually naturally gotten some wear. And uh, in here on this panel, you know, create some wear in here. And we're just kind of gently rubbing this, you know, and getting some of that some of that off of there, some of that moss green, and pulling that out and trying to see where the actual wear is, you know, might have occurred, you know, down here, you know, on the side of this. This is kind of rounded over here originally. And then uh, probably up here, since this is the bottom door, you typically see a big wear spot from people just kind of pushing this door, the door shut by hand, you know, up there, you know, maybe a little bit of wear across the top of this, you know, and something, you know, somebody was polishing this panel up, they're going to get a little bit of wear in there on that panel as they cleaned it, you know and just a, you know, a little bit through the paint here and there. So this isn't like a really crud type, type wear down, you know, to really make a, you know, where there's nothing left of the paint. I mean, you might do this on a tabletop if you wanted a really, you know, wash down, you know, effect. But uh, for this, that's probably pretty good. Now another thing we're gonna do here, this is where our original hardware is. And this is original hardware for the piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop this on here just like that and hold it over the holes. That's where the holes are. And typically when people will put their hand on here, they're going to touch the, these surfaces around here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of wear around this hardware, you know, to, to look like that hardware has always kind of been there, you know, which it has. I mean, from the 1930s till now, this is the original hardware. So what we're going to do is just create that little wearing effect. If somebody had rubbed their hands around there, you know, trying to clean it. And this is just real gently. There might be, you know, some other tools you could find to do this, but, you know, just something like that. And there we go. So, now that, that particular, you know, piece is ready to dry. But what we're gonna, and then once that's dry, you know, it'll flash back to this color. So right now we're going to forward advance to another door, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. Here's a finished door that I've already done all the wear on. Actually, it's spinning around this way. You can see this up here. This is where the hardware was. That's where I wore it through on the door. And we're going to introduce a new product here. And this is probably one of the easiest finishing products I've ever used. This is our, our low sheen burnishing paste. And basically it's, a, uh, it's an acrylic paste, really no odor at all. And what you do with this, it's very simple, you're going to do the same thing that you always that you did with the other. I like to use again the, the inexpensive, you know, natural bristle brushes. You're going to push that all in here, you know, because we brush this milk paint pretty porous. So we want to push that into the paint, you know, real quick. You know, what's so nice about this uh, acrylic um, paste is you just really can't mess up with it. I mean, you can't really apply too much. Um, if you apply too little and miss a spot, you can come right back and touch it up later at any time, and it doesn't leave any halo or rings or anything like that. Um, you know, creates a, uh, a resistant finish so you can wipe down the milk paint. Uh, this dries to a really, really low sheen. It does darken the color a little bit, so it doesn't quite have that chalky look. Uh, but then it makes it more washable. 
much more washable. And again, I'm going through doing the same thing. And I'm going through here, hitting my interiors first of the panels, you know, the molding, working it into that molding real good. And coming around here on the glass of the panels first, and the end grain. And this is, you know, got good pressure, spreading this stuff out real well. You could probably, you could apply it with a, uh, on a wall surface, you could do it with a rag, you know, you could do it with a damp sponge. Um, you know, for this, since I've done all this with the, with the brush, this is exactly, you know, the tool that I've been using throughout the whole process. Of course, I've gone through three or four of these cheap brushes throughout, throughout the process, but find this stuff pretty liberal and then get to the point where it just, you know, doesn't want to really spread that much further. And uh, just working it into the paint. And I let the, I let the first coat dry overnight before I uh, came in and, and finished it with this with the sealer here. Um, you could probably do it all in one day as far as putting the uh, your top coat of moss green on. You let that dry for a couple hours and then uh, come back. You know, you can use the acrylic uh, uh, burnishing paste right on top of that moss green. And you can see it's already kind of dry. There's a lot of spots in here already. You know? And I just keep working out with the brush. If I see some heavy spots, you know, like in the corners, I'll just try to pick them up and move them around a little bit. I don't get real too concerned about the hairs with this stuff. It just They'll just come right out of here later. You know, when the finish is dry, you can work them. They just kind of flick right off the surface. And you can see some of this is even almost dry already, and I'm just working it in. You know? And uh, that's the great thing about it is it's just... Gosh, this is this is probably the the easiest uh, you know finishing, especially on large you know surfaces that you can find. Just works really well, and the whole cover you know that we did, I did all that you saw earlier in the video was completely unfinished with this already. So, and this is just basically the last step. You know. You can see how easy that was, you know, coming through. Again, this is this is this is our low sheen burnishing paste. But hopefully, by the time the video is done, you'll uh, this will be available on, on the internet, you know, right from the Real Milk Paint Company. And um, you know, if we flip this door over, you know, I'll just show you the back side right away, and that's already been done with the paste. And you can see, I mean, right there, you can see the you know, final dry product, you know, you know, really, really low sheen, and I did this, the, the back side, exactly the way I did the front, so you can see, you know, really nice color, you know, not too shiny, not too built up, not too heavy looking, you know, and just a nice, nice, you know, finish, and I'm just going to touch up right there where I stuck my fingerprints, and uh, let that dry, and uh, I think we're all set, what we'll do, We'll uh, give you a shot of this once it's installed, you know, in our house, and uh, you'll be able to see the completely finished product. Thanks, thanks so much for viewing. We've got our new products on RealMilkPaint.com, and um, thanks for watching this on YouTube.